John chapter 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. I go to prepare a place for you. In my Father's house are many rooms. What is Jesus doing for the disciples? In fact, why is he even saying, don't let your hearts be troubled? He's saying this because the disciples are worried sick. They've had so much confidence in Jesus. Everywhere they go, man, stuff is happening. Blinded eyes are being opened up. They're going to parties, turning water into wine. Ain't no party like a Jesus Christ party because a Jesus Christ party don't stop. It's the turn up with Jesus. It's good times. And now Jesus is going, yo, I'm going to die. So confidence has left them. And so he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. I don't need you to trust in yourself. I don't need you to trust in others. I need you to trust in me. But what does he do? He begins to paint a vision, a picture for them for where they're going. How many know this is one of the greatest leadership qualities that you must have if you're going to lead any people? That vision is what produces passion. Some of you today, you lack passion in your life because you don't have a vision for your life. Notice, Jesus has given you a leadership teaching right here in John chapter 14. When the disciples should be comforting Jesus, Jesus is comforting the disciples. He's the one that's about to die, not them. Oh, man, you're going to die? Yeah, but don't worry. It's going to be okay. How many you know that's not the guy you want at the hospital, you know? We're going to miss you. We can't make it without you. You got to make it without me. <laughs> Jesus is, is comforting them when they should be comforting him. But what does he do? What does he do to say, I want you to get in that wheelbarrow? He starts to paint a vision for them. What is the vision he gives? He doesn't give them a temporary perspective. He gives them an eternal perspective. He starts talking about heaven. You know, the Bible mentions heaven 500 different times. See, for Jesus, heaven wasn't some type of thinking or theory. It was a real, literal place. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. It's real. And it's the hope of glory that we hold in our hearts. That regardless of what we walk through, regardless of how shaky the tightrope gets, I'm not living for right now. I'm living for something in the future. My life is not about a happily ever after. My life is about a heaven ever after. I know Jesus is preparing something for me. Come on, I feel God on this message right now. He goes, I want you to know where I'm going. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Isn't that good news right there? That right now, Jesus was an earthly carpenter. Can you imagine the cosmic carpenter that he is? <laughs> the heavenly carpenter that he is as he's preparing a home for you? And he starts to give them a vision. Why? Because he gives them a picture of the future so they can endure through the pain of the present. Some of you today, you keep giving up and you keep going back to your old ways and back to your old life because you don't have a picture of the life that you want in Jesus. I submit to you today, Jesus provides you a vision. It's time for you to get a vision for your life. I remember when I first met Don Shree, I was 17 years of age. I was in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was just a young man, really just freshly had an encounter with God about a month or two before, and I was really living for God. I was really going after God, and I was just believing this is, this is my year, and I felt like I could do anything, and I was in Nashville at this Christian concert, and all of a sudden one day I'm sitting there in the service, and I look up in the balcony, and there she is. She looks like an angel out of the sky just walking down the steps. I said, my God in heaven, I choose you. She was beautiful, and she was gorgeous. And that day I was talking to her and we were hanging out and I was too afraid to get her number. I, I kind of stumbled, but I am persistent. I am a stalker. I found a friend. I got her number. I texted her that night. I called her that night. We began a relationship. In fact, our relationship began like two and a half months, almost three months over the phone. The problem was is that my generation, we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have all these gadgets. I only had one picture from Dawn Tree that my brother had given me, and she was two years younger in the photo. <laughs> so we met, and that was sparks flying. But I didn't see her again for three months. Couldn't go to Instagram and go through 19,000 photos and see her from every angle. I'm like, yeah, I think this is the one. It wasn't any of that. It was by faith. (laughs) 
And I remember I had this one photo of Don Shree, one photo. And we would talk every day. I, I, I'd be on the phone talking to her, and I, I'd hold the photo. I'm like, who am I talking to? This is the real FaceTime right here, okay? <laughs> and I remember I get off the phone with her at times. I go, I go, man, what does she look like? I mean, is she really as pretty as I remember? Does she really capture my heart? I, I couldn't, I hadn't seen her in so long. And so every time I would start to doubt, I would go and I'd find that picture and say, oh, man. <laughs> Rich, you can't do any. This is, this is way out of your league, dog. Stay right here. <laughs> what, what was the picture doing? The picture was giving me strength to endure. Listen to me. Vision gives pain a purpose. <laughs> when you have a vision, when you see what's ahead, you can walk through all sorts of stuff. Without a vision, my people will perish. Some of you leaders, you need to go back to your church, and you need to make it crystal clear the vision that you have. Because if you want people to step out into the unknown, if you want people to get into the wheelbarrow, they got to at least know where on earth it is that they're going. And I believe with a vision, you can walk through anything. All of my pain has a purpose when I have a vision. Come on, if you believe it, somebody give God a shout of praise in this place. I got a vision. 